What's going on everyone? I'm here with another episode of From Touchdowns to Title. We're here on location with Garrett Weston. Garrett, so glad you could join us today. Hey, thanks for setting this up. I really appreciate that. So I wanted to sit down with you, talk a little bit about your journey. I don't think people have a, a good grasp on where you started, how you started, and how long this kind of journey has been going on for you. So I wanted to sit down and talk with you a little bit about that. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is uh, this has been the fir- first and only job I've ever had, really, um, in, in the business world. Uh, I've been doing this for about 16 years now. Um, I uh, started working out of a real estate office when I was 17 years old. I got a license at 18, was a senior at high school, Um, was able to go to school during the first half of the day and um, work the second half of the day and and work weekends. And just, it's it's been a a long 16 years thus far. (laughs) So when you you started, when you were in high school, and let's say you go to your parents and you say, hey, I'm gonna work at a real estate office. Yep. Was that accepted? Were, did, were they cool with that? Or did they just want you kind of to be into something? Yeah, you know, it, it really, it, it's always, I think going back to, um, and I, as I was mentioning earlier, it's, it's work ethic. And I think, you know, my, um, my parents saw my work ethic um, all the way back to, you know, when I was 12 years old, um, my mother had to, you know, drop me off at a at an art gallery because I, I, you know, met the the owner, and uh, he said, you know, hey, if you want to come in, you want to, you know, Windex pictures and just kind of dust around, you know, the shelves. Yeah. I, I, you know, I can't pay you in money, but I, you know, would certainly be able to, you know, give you guys some free, you know, free prints and lithographs yeah. and kind of help out a little bit. And so I said, okay, cool. So. I remember doing that and, and that's kind of really, you know, was kind of a weekly thing and, um, and then that uh, kind of parlayed, you know, into, um, you know, odd jobs around the neighborhood, helping, you know, wash cars and um, from there, uh, you know, I, I ended up getting a, a work permit in middle school when I was 15 and a half and um, when you're 15 and a half, you can only work a certain amount of hours. So, yeah. you know, I think it's limited, or at least it was limited back then to, you know, 15, 18 hours a week. Yeah. But I was kind of the one that, you were pushing you know, the envelope. <laughs> yeah, pushing the envelope, taking everybody's shifts, you know, yeah. you know, you know, hey, I'll take your Friday night, I'll take your Sunday morning, you don't want to work weekends, no problem, take, take, take. So, so that, you know, just it really, you know, while my friends were out surfing, having fun, you know, 15, 16 years old, you know, I was I basically had a full-time job at that point. Yeah. And then from there, the opportunity came where uh, I met a broker um, who had come in and I had sold him, you know, like $2,000 worth of product. And, uh, and his wife said, Hey, I, I think this kid would be really good in the real estate industry. Yeah. You know, give him your card. Um, and, uh, and so from there, you know, I went down, met him and he said, what are they paying you there? And I said, ah, you know, I'm making like $1,500 a month. Um, and, uh, and he said, okay, well, I tell you what, you know, how about I pay you 1500? You can be my gopher. You can, you know, do open houses. You can go on listing appointments with me. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, kind of learn the business. Yeah. And so I said, great. So I, I was so excited, happy. So that's where really I, I started, you know, at, at his real estate office and um, showing me the ropes. And, and so anyway, I, I was working for him all day, every day. And it became a point where I said, you know, hey, I, I can come in, you know, for the first half of the day. Um, excuse me, I, I can come in, uh, for, um, the second half of the day and I can still work weekends, yeah. but I'm tied up for the first half. And I remember him saying, he goes, well, what do you, what do you got going? What's, you know, what, what are you doing? And I said, well, I got to go back to school. And he said, uh, he goes, where are you going? You know, Orange Coast College or Golden West? And I said, no, I'm actually going to be a senior this year in high school. <laughs> and he was shocked. He couldn't believe it. He yeah. never did a background check. I always, he always thought I was older than I was. And so anyway, you know, from there, you know, I, I just had turned 18, you know, senior at high school, um, first year out of the business between working in high school and working as a real estate agent. Uh, my first year in it was 96,000 at the end of the year. Hmm. Um, and this, what and, year is this? this um, so I grad- graduated back in 2002. So, um, yeah, so it was really just, you know, th- th- putting myself in that place at that point, um, it, it felt good. It felt like I was ahead of the crowd. I was beating all my peers to, you know, maybe their first time jobs, their summer jobs, stuff like that. Some of their parents. Some maybe. of their parents. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was, 
it was just really kind of rewarding, fulfilling. And, and so again, if, if I could put, you know, kind of a theme to this, it, it would be work ethic. Yeah. And I think that's missed so much in, you know, our, you know, in the world now it's just, is work ethic and going out there. People say, you know, work hard, you know, do this and that, but what does that mean? And people don't really understand what working hard, you know, cause you go like, well, I'm doing, you know, this, that, you know, what, you know, but it's, it's really just, it's work ethic and it's, and it's finding something that you like to do as everybody says, yeah. but for me, it's been little milestones, you know? And so, you know, when That's, I, yeah, it's outstanding. So yeah, yeah. as a senior, you're working, you're making almost 90,000, you're again way ahead of the curve in terms of your peers the person you're working for thinks you're way older right. than you are <laughs> um was this something that from the start you kind of were like hey i really enjoy this or was it hey like I i'm really doing well at this i'm, I'm making x amount of dollars I'm, I'm way ahead of the game where, where was that kind of that feeling at that point. I know it obviously changed over time. Did, right. Was it just something you enjoyed or was it something that kind of just worked for you? You know, when I first started, when you're, when you're like I said, when you're at a, at a certain age and you're in an environment that is not, you know, atypical for that type of age, yeah. you know, you're around, I mean, everyone in the office I was around was, you know, minimum 30, 40 years yeah. older. Um, been in the business. Had been in the business, in there, yeah. you know, for forever. And so, that was just kind of a neat experience to start with. Yeah. And so from feeding off of there, it was like, you know, um, the, you know, then you're doing a deal, you're, um, you're making your first commission check. And agents on the other end are also older as well. It, it, you're dealing oh, with. absolutely. And so that's where, and this is what I learned a long time ago, is, and for anyone that is, is watching that may say, gosh, you know, it's, it's challenging being a young looking person, getting into this field, and saying, gosh, I've, you know, I've got an uphill battle. My um, experience has been, you know, yes, you look young, but it's what comes out of here. And if you can convey messages, and I did, and you can tell a lot of times when you're speaking to somebody and they kind of have that, you know, not smirk, but, but look on their face of like, okay, what do you know that I don't know? Yeah. And then once you can, you know, convey your, your message, yeah. it's like, wow, this guy actually knows what he's doing. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. He's helpful. Um, I always tell people, you know, whatever you tell someone at 10 o'clock, tell them the same thing at three o'clock. I mean, yeah. don't lie. Um, and people appreciate that. And people then ultimately appreciate a hustler, a hard worker. You know, this guy maybe didn't know the answer to this question, but he's not going to BS me. He's going to go and he's going to, he's going to find it. Yeah. And that's all people want is just someone that's willing to put in the time, energy, effort. Yeah, what's funny is that leads me into, it's probably a story that Garrett doesn't even know. So uh, my grandmother is still a practicing realtor. She had a listing that she had in Orange County that was gonna be too much for her to handle. Uh, contacted me to contact realtors in the area. Now, what Garrett doesn't understand or know is she asked me to contact you know 20 or so realtors in the area. And they all got the same exact message that there was a possibility that they could be co-listing a property that was at the time over $10 million. I want everyone to know that there was three realtors that even got back to me, three out of 20. And it was no surprise that instantly Garrett called, Shane called, and Tim called, Tim Smith. and the professionalism that was through those was outstanding and you see why when you're calling 20 top realtors yep. that the top ones are the ones that are calling you back actually right the thing that sold my my grandmother when she met with you was the fact that it wasn't a car it wasn't the clothes it was the fact that when she, you guys talked there was a genuine i can trust this guy if i'm not here to do the right thing right and i think that's missed a lot, especially out in this market, because it's so cutthroat with the commission prices right. or the commissions that people can earn. Um, I think that the relatability is something that a lot of people miss. And that was the first thing that popped through with you guys was the relatability to be like, no, yeah, we have X amount in our pipeline, but this right. is what we do. This is, you know, we're going to take care of yours like this is our house. And I think people on a high level think that 
the marketing, all this other stuff matters so much more than the actual fact of like, like you just said, like just be be good at your job yeah. and and treat treat everything like like the, it's supposed to be treated like it was yours. Um, so that was really cool, you know, especially for me because we've now been around each other for you know almost a year. Yep. Um, that was something cool to see, just because when I came out to this market, I thought it was going to be a lot different. You know, I thought teams like your your guys' team are you know not accessible. You know, and then when we meet, I'm like this guy's completely different than what I would think. So yep. that's again why we're sitting down t- again today because I just think that people just have such a distorted view of the fact that they see your guys' numbers and they don't see you guys. Right. Um, and, and that's probably reminiscent for most, um, and, and not to interrupt, no. but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, like you see you know, these documentaries on all these famous actors and, you know, or um, or professional athletes, you know, they just, you think you wake up one day and it's like you landed a big role or you think you, you woke up one day and all of a sudden you had this certain ability or talent and, and people don't really realize all the time and energy and effort, you know, all the, you know, either cars you had to sleep in or all the yeah. you know, top ramen you had to eat or yeah. all those hard working stories. And it's, it's the same type of thing. And I think if you look at any professional um, or any successful person out there, um, it's, it's, it's been, you know, a, a long journey yeah. and people, don't realize that and it's hard to quantify that in just a you know a few minute video yeah. as to a journey um, you know you're, you're talking you know missing kids vaca- you know vacations yeah kids birthday parties you know I remember giving my you know kids kids halfway between you know the birthday party hey guys gotta run gotta run an open house yeah. um, and so there's a lot of sacrifice and time that has been put on the back burner to then you know um, to give you other enjoyments in life, which, and again, money is not the end all be all, but it, it's definitely, um, it, it, it does make our world go around. It certainly helps. Um, it does. I, <laughs> I, I, I do. And you know, everybody always has their thing. I, you know, it's a, they're saying, I, I, it definitely doesn't make you happier. It just, it makes life more convenient. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, but, so yeah. take me back. I know we, we were in high school. So when you get out of high school and people are, especially in that kind of, 2000 it's getting less it's getting more accepted that people aren't going to college but in that realm it was like hey you get done with high school you got to go to college right um so when you get out what happens do you continue with the real estate thing or are you yeah i um so yes so college was um at, at a certain point when you know the career and everything just really started blossoming um and, and you know and my my numbers and my ability and, and, you know, after experience, you know, yeah. being for a year, two years, all of a sudden it's like, it was kind of the point of no turning back. Yeah. And so, you know, um, it just, and I remember my wife telling me too, I got married, you know, I met my wife when I was 14, we got married at 19, kids at 20. So try taking on, you know, a, a business, starting a business, um, and, and a family, and you know it's a lot to take on not just um to take it on but when you're at a certain age of 19 20 years old your, your maturity level is not there yeah, mentally yeah, yeah. You're, you know you can be different you person. can be a very mature person but internally it just you don't have you just don't have all those life experiences yeah. and so for me um you know it's been uh it, it's been a lot of uh you know you know plugging away and and just keeping your nose to the ground and um you know, just, uh, just make it work. Make, make it work. So you know? when you again, make that choice, this is going to be what I'm, what I'm going to do at what point was there a transaction? Was there uh, you know, a listing that you got? At what point are you like, I'm going to make this like, this is, this is my thing. Like I'm going to, this is going to be my career. Yeah. Was it um, when was it someone you talked to? What, what was it for you? You know, um, I, I've, always been driven yes by you know um obviously money financials yeah. um doing something that others don't um and so for me it was um it was a combination of quite a few things yeah. but but again going back to having a family and kids um and i think you know there's many many people that may watch this and you know their wife was very instrumental in their success i owe a huge part of my success to my wife, yeah. foundation, um, stability, you know, going to work, coming home. I'm a creature of habit, eat the same thing every day yeah, for yeah. breakfast, 
work out, here. go here, there, you know. Yeah. And so I like things in a certain orderly way. And so that, um, so, so I guess the roundabout way to answer your question is, you know, was there an aha moment where it was like, you know, th this is, you know, what I'm destined to do? No, um, I, I don't, I don't think there's one pinpoint moment other than, you know, I, I, I started to kind of feel that I, you know, had, uh, I, was doing well. I, 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 you know, chosen, chosen my profession that I, I think that, um, suited yeah my my, my ability sure. woke up one day you're like yeah, this is my thing like, this, is my, this is my thing so where did the stanfield connection kind of happen was that early on was it later? yeah so going back to and again my theme 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 would be um it, it's work ethic and so work ethic then leads to opportunities and a little bit of luck and so after building my name in an area mm -hmm. you know we have as you get a licensed agent you become you pick a farming pick area a farm. somewhere you're gonna work yeah. and stuff like that and so after working and working and working and working for so long in a in an area and gaining traction success and people noticing you um, especially in such a cutthroat you know Orange County is Bad. It's, I it's mean, rough. It's, it is very rough, yeah. and so and certain areas and communities can even be more rough and more challenging. I mean, when you're going up against agents that have already thirty years under their belt and do have established relationships, yeah. and maybe even agents that sold the homes new out of trailers yeah. to all of these home owners. So when you're going up against those sorts of things um, and, and to gain traction doing that, yeah, I'd say that it was. It was tenfold, so I don't want to say, "Hey, if I can do it, anybody can do it." But um, to to have all those things working against you, you know, from your age to experience, and and again, your competition, yeah. the, the lion's den you're jumping into. But um, you know that uh, it, you know it, it worked out. But um, yeah, so so he so that that connection for you just started. He, so, yeah, so because so you were dominating obviously an area. So dominating an area, um, yes. Then you'll have um, the opportunity yeah. part. Yeah, bro, and and and, and and so Sean reaches out, you know, with whom I'm with now, and we're fortunate enough to have been. We have been recognized over the last eight years as the. And everyone, everyone does say, "Hey, I'm the number one, number one," and that 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 term gets thrown around very very loosely. Very very loosely. <laughs> number one, you know, I'm the number one in this area. I'm the number one here there. Um, and truly, we, we have been recognized by the Wall Street Journal uh, as the number one team in Orange County yeah. for the last eight years consecutively. Mm -hmm. And we are the largest producing team for the company of Sotheby's worldwide. Yeah. So we're we, going we're gonna to pipe in um, hand claps right when you say Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fun. <laughs> so, yeah, we were able to achieve um, $555 million last year in sales. That equivalents to 350, about 350 transactions. Um, why I say the transaction amount is because that's important. I mean, if you really break that down into how many homes you're selling a day, a year, um, and the amount of service and level of service and customer service that has to go into that to achieve yeah, those numbers is huge. Because yeah. you will. You'll have agents that maybe just you know, do uh, work a certain area, live in a certain area, and their price point may be a 20 or $30 million, and you pop one or two of those, all of a sudden you're at 70, 80, 100 million. Yeah. And it sounds impressive, but, um, but we have stuff, everything from 40 million, down to three hundred thousand dollar condo. They sold the house in Riverside, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> just, just letting my we, Riverside people know. We, we, <laughs> they service all areas. <laughs> so we do. We sell. We really do. We sell. Sell everywhere. Service everywhere. But what I, you're saying is the customer service that you would have to do for, like, let's say you do three transactions for seventy five million. You're, yep. you're essentially dealing with only three families. Correct. So it's like you're yep. you're talking about the fact that there's over three hundred. There's a lot right. of moving parts. And so I'm always fascinated because when I go to restaurants and you know I see you know particular restaurants all the waitresses and waiters they all be dressed the same they have their hair the same way they have certain lipstick on they have everything set a certain way or you go to you know hotels like the Pelican Hill Resort and they I remember one time my wife was sitting out at the pool and she forgot her glasses and the guys no problem I'll run back to your room and I'll grab them and so I refer to you know our our level of service is like a pe Pelican Hill customer service like white glove like very white glove and the white glove term is very cliche it does get thrown around a lot but um really i think that that's what is going to help us 
in future business. There are a lot of real estate companies and discounted brokerages that you see Very now. Much. And so that is, is so critical when it comes to customer service, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to foreseeing, you know, potential issues or problems or things that come up. I mean, when, when these people are done with their house, they want to be done with it. They don't want to have issues, problems back after the, the fact. And so you, sometimes you see these, these brokers, they'll do, you know, do them for just these yeah. pennies on the dollar. They'll, they'll sign in, just leave it. But when the market shifts, everything has been very frothy, stick a sign out front, you know, certainly uh, with marketing efforts, the right of mar target marketing, yeah. um, things get sold. But I think when the market does potentially have a correction, I, I think all those companies' prediction could be that they could be out of business. Yeah, um, yeah and, that's, and that's that's tough to have. Um, I know that the hard work is, is the theme of, of what we're talking about. Um, you have kids, how old are your kids? 11 and 14. 14, so if your 14 year old <laughs> comes to you and starts talking about real estate, I know we talked about kind of mentorship and I'm sure that you're getting you know, into that realm just because of your experience. Right. What is your advice for people coming up that are now seeing? Now, obviously, we get it, we get people with a distorted view just because of the million dollar listing stuff and and that stuff. You know. Yeah. With the hard work attached to it, what what are some of your your kind of points that you can give to people that are kind of coming up? Yeah, and again, just again back to you know the, the work ethic thing. So, million dollar listing. Um, I was down to the, the, the three, the final three for Million Dollar Listing Orange County. Yeah. They decided not to run Orange County. They decided to do San Francisco instead. And I think they were going to parlay Orange County into that. But San Francisco didn't end up really, I think, running too many um, yeah. seasons. And, and uh, so that didn't end up going forward. But um, the, you know, the perception of this business is, you know, getting into it, nice car, nice suit, um, and then you get in the office and you realize it's a seven day a week gig yeah. and people don't realize that. And so, you know, people say, well, you know, gosh, maybe I could just do it part time and sell a house here and there. And in order to sell a house here and there, you really have to, this really has to be, you know, a 12 to 15 hour a day job. Yeah. And, and you really have to be able to connect the dots and connect when you do meet people or, you know, um, so obviously again, we talked about the work, work ethic side for work people, ethic for, for people yep. that are coming up. Um, what would you, I know a, a lot that, of questions that come to me are, are talking about different brokerages, right? So, uh, as opposed to the big box, you know, going to, you know, a, a broker that's probably maybe a little bit smaller more personal attention. What, what right. is your thing for someone starting out? Yeah, um, the, obviously, it just depends on what you want to get out of the business. You have to, and, and anytime I'll, I'll have someone come in and I'm interviewing them or giving them advice, you know, I always, my, my question I leave them with, and I say, please, just before we meet next time in a week or two, yeah. I go, I want you to really, really think hard about what direction you want to go in this business. Mm -hmm. Do you really just want to kind of work with buyers and you enjoy yeah. just throwing them in the car, driving them around, yeah, some learning the inventory, learning about, you know, off market deals and really kind of facilitating that, um, you know, fulfilling that, that, that space in the real estate yeah. world. Do you want your name in lights and shining armor? Do you want to run the business? Do you want to, have you know, team. have a team? Yeah. Do you, and, and all those sorts of things. And every one of them, um, is is important and so um you know everyone just did, i want to get a license and i want to go up to newport coast and i want to sell 20 million dollar homes yeah that is everyone's that's what i see everyone yeah. everyone says i want to do that and the so the biggest advice i give to people is please 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 crawl 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 before you run in this business yeah. because if you t if you start off running you will get exposed You'll fall. Um, yes, you know you, you'll 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 manage. You may do a deal here, deal there, what have you, but you're exposing yourself to potential liabilities. You expose yourself to um, disservicing a client, yeah. leaving big money on the table, um, learning things, questions. You know, and it's one thing if you don't know a question. Nobody knows everything, but 
when it's basic, simple questions and certain things like that, you know, you just, there's so many intricacies to this business and this industry that if you're not fully prepared, you're just doing yourself or your clients and yourself a disservice. You really are. And that's where you just want to make sure that, um, you know, well, you're seeing, especially out in Orange County, uh, there's a very big push of a younger generation of realtor. I mean, even in your offices is relatively, as opposed to most offices, right. younger. Um, you're seeing the Keller Williams uh, have a very young crowd. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm seeing two sides of it. I'm, I'm seeing that there are people that are just getting in because they're like, hey, I could work part-time and sell a couple homes and the commissions are great. Right. But I'm also seeing people that, that obviously see the the market shift and see kind of like hey I can build my own business that's the big push for kind of this generation is being entrepreneurs and, and, and doing that thing and I think a lot of people are trying to see um, what they can do with it but again like what you were saying I don't think a lot of people have the idea of how really that grind is and yeah and, and, how, and how much it takes yeah and there you know the, the unfortunate thing is and i tell this people all the time you know real estate agents they've adopted the reputation of a step above you know used car salesman they yeah. really they have and there's so there's so much smoke and mirrors in this business that it's hard to you know really kind of navigate you know you know who's who's being genuine who's honest yeah. um and and you know we're going to market your house and we're going to this and that and these terms and these things are just thrown so so off the cuff where you know it, it's hard and yeah. me being even in the industry as long as i've been in it you know um i can't imagine a, a novice buyer even an experienced buyer or seller you know being able to kind navigate of that. navigate that so yeah that's that's tough and, and because i've seen kind of the, the back end of how much you guys put into it. What are your thoughts going forward on the social media side? I, I know you guys push out a lot of stuff with your houses and stuff like that. Where, where do yeah. you see um, real estate kind of adopting to Facebook, Instagram, and that whole, right. that whole push? So yes, social media um, has become very, um, very relevant, um, even more so, clearly more so when from when I first got in the industry 16 years ago. But, um, you know, everything was print ad. Yeah. We still have a lot of print ad, yeah. um, ton of print ad and, and that gets done. And it is expensive. And if it didn't work, we wouldn't do it. Yeah. But, um, but so we do a lot of print. But the social media, um, the infrastructure, the engineers that we have working behind our scenes that are, that are really creating these, these systems, like real systems yeah. um, that are going to be exciting. And I don't want to go into too much detail, but I think some of these systems could potentially be utilized yeah. in the industry yeah. for all real estate companies, offices. And those are sorts of things that, that we are, um, that we work feverishly and the, and the, the brainiacs that we have working on our team that yeah. we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars building these things, working things, things, developing these things. And, um, is that something so, you think is going to be going forward like five years down the road? Really yeah. So, so social right? media, um, yes. And, and every, you know, they say, what do they say? 90% of the people start their search online when they're looking for a home. Yeah. Well, I know a lot of, a lot of, I, I've been doing a ton of, of classes and the, the, the stat I start off every single one of my classes with is national association of realtors, the biggest buyer pool last year as opposed to what most people think was millennials. It was right. 30, 34% of the, the buyers and sellers, but 90% of them found their home online before they contacted you. Right. So for me, when I start off, I, they always, I, I see in the crowds an aha, like, okay, maybe I want to pay attention to what this guy's about to say, just because I'm letting people know that if they are doing that and we are such a, a click now society that if they click to your profile or they Google you, which everyone does, absolutely, um, and they see nothing or they see something that's not built out, it looks like it was built on Microsoft DOS, right? they are going to move on to the next person no matter what type of, you may be 10 times better than the next realtor that has a built out website, but right. it doesn't matter, perception is reality, they're gonna go with that person. Correct. Um, so I think that's that's huge, and that's why I always like to ask, like ask this question because you, you get such differing responses. You have people, you know, I have clients that are 24, 25, and then I have clients that have been in the business 25, 30 years, and right. they're like, 
I'm only doing print ad and you're not going to do anything about it. Right. I'm like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You, you, and, and that's, you know, um, and, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but you, somebody say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah. Um, you either are going to adopt the way that the world is moving or you're not. And if you don't, you are going to get left behind. Yeah. And getting back to the question earlier about individual small mom and pop offices yeah. or large teams, I think the small mom and pop offices or certainly the individuals, I firmly believe are, are going to go by the wayside. There's yeah. just too much running a business. There's too many things to do. Yeah if you run this like a business and so very few teams companies run run their operation like a business yeah. and and too many moving parts just too many moving parts too many i mean if i yeah i mean and i was if you were going to open a i don't know even a donut shop i mean you yeah. you know you can't work the front desk yeah. work the fryer bake the donut i mean and and, and you know well, customer service I mean, there's just too many things to do you have to have a team you have to everyone has to have their set yeah. you know, They're routine of what they do and how they handle things. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's, I mean, that's huge. Like I, one of my sayings I say in all my classes is don't be Superman, build the justice league. Yeah. Like you don't, you do not have to be great at every single job. Right. Um, when I start working with clients, I usually find out what they're good at or they're on the phones. Are they good at door knocking or whatever? And I'm going to build systems around them that they are going to do that. I don't want to take you away from that because that's your talent. Let's right. build stuff around you because you're not going to be able to. You see the people that have their eggs in too many baskets. Um, you know, Ty Lopez says the man that chases two chickens gets none. Yep. Like you try to do too many things, you're not going to be successful. Right. So, like you said, systems, and that's why these teams are really gobbling up a lot of talent. Is right. because people like you come to them and say, "Hey, listen, like." We just want you to be able to do this. Yep. We'll build systems around you to be able to do everything right. else. Just do what you're here to do. So that that's huge. I think that you know that you guys have that you know that vision. And that. It, it yep, and it's it is. It's a very costly. Um, I mean, our ad spends are over. I mean, the the marketing and everything that we have and our operation is in excess of two hundred thousand a month. Yeah. Really, between all of the you know the ten people that are paid staff to you know, the, 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 the house, um, yeah, the marketing of the properties, um, the, uh, marketing, the marketing companies yeah. that we have, that, you guys work with. that we work with. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I mean, that is, you know, it's expensive, it's costly, but it's hard to sit down at a dining table. And, and I always tell my, 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 um, my sellers, I say, listen, I go, do yourself a favor. I go, I want you. And I even put together a questionnaire sometimes yeah. for sellers and I say I want you to ask these agents these questions they make sense right yeah. what are you gonna do for me on a weekly basis what do you you know how you know all these different I have all these different questions a list yeah and and it's fascinating because when they when I get that call back and they say you know what we're gonna go with you yeah you know really yeah. I there's just, just like, there's no there's no comparison yeah. you know from the company we work with um, to to our into, you know, a, a licensed agent is an independent contractor. They go and work for a company, and some agents have a thousand dollars a month marketing budget. Some have three thousand, five thousand, yeah. and others have in excess of two hundred. Yeah. And so, that's where it's you know, it's, I think it's going to be very tough to compete with the teams that really run this like a business. Yeah. And um, you know, it, it's just. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's much, much, much different. So I always ask this, usually towards the end, 10,000 feet, Garrett's 45, what is this? Is he running his own office? Does he have a team? What, what does that look like? Yeah. What is the, the long-term kind of plan for, for you? Or do you even have it? Is it just a day-to-day -day kind of growth? No, everybody, I think any, again, any successful person, I think that, you know, always has that tunnel vision. My wife even bought me a piece of, art, piece of artwork and the, the the name of it was tunnel vision. I have very, I have tunnel vision. <laughs> I, I, see, team. I see an end goal. I see an end, you know, um, uh, I, I see the end, um, not in the sense of stopping, you know, my job or working or retiring or anything like that. But, um, when I first joined Sean, I was, I was, you know, I still remember the day, the time I remember the phone call, you know, calling me and, um, Hey man, you know, I see your young, young go-getter. You're out there. You've built a name for yourself. 
um, if you'd ever consider joining a team, you know, I'd love to have you come in and, you know, be a partner, work alongside. And, you know, yeah. I was working in a particular area. He grew up in a particular area and was working. And then from there, we really had two dominated two farm areas, which parlayed into another one. And now, as you can see, yeah, we are right. up and down the coast yeah, yeah. and now oh, heading toward LA. Yeah. And so it's just, it's... And the desert. And, and so, so to answer your question, my commitment and goal, and I think loyalty is a very, very, very important thing in this industry, in this business. You'll have agents that will bounce from company to company, oh, yeah. team to team, and the grass is always greener and I'm not successful here. So my life is going to change if I go there. Yeah. And that is, that is such a big misconception. And so, you know, I, we're a family and so families fight. We have our ups, we have our downs, but at the end of the day, I made a goal to build the biggest, baddest, fastest car, if you will. Yeah. Okay. And that was, 11 years ago when I joined Stanford Real Estate and I, I said, we're gonna make this work and I'm gonna put my heart, soul, energy, time, effort into this and we're gonna help grow it and build and build. And I remember you know, when I was there and there were five of us and we were doing 150 million uh, 11 years ago, that was good. And then it went you know, to 224, and then went to 335 and then in 26, fast forward in 2016, we did 485 million, um, and we were um, recognized as the number nine team in all of the country. Yeah. Um, Wall Street Journal puts out a, a, a thing. It's called Real Trends. Yeah. yeah. Top 1,000. They take the top thousand agents across the nation. So um, we were recognized. We've always been in the top five. We've always been in the top ten. 2014, we were number five. But, um, and then last in 2017, we're waiting for those stats to come out. Yeah. yeah, we did 555 million. So it's just always been a, a grow, 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 grow. And, and so for me, you know, loyalty is key. You know, could I do my own thing? There's agents that they, they need the coattails. They need to hang on. Um, sure. I, I feel that I've got enough, um, of, of the right, call it X factor, if you will, or sure. Yeah. I could go do my own thing. No problem but I made that commitment and that pact. And so we're going to just continue to grow and build nice. this thing out. Our goal is ultimately a billion in sales. We want to be the number one real estate team in the country. Nice. So again, you know that those numbers get skewed, you know, the, like the number one company, I mean, he could, the number one team could have 150 agents. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, things get a little skewed, but we keep it lean, mean, and yeah. you know, we're proud to do, you know, 555 million, like I said, last year, uh, we're well on our way to doing hitting 600 million this year. So yeah. we're just going to continue to keep growing and building and, um, and you know, agents have good years and bad years and good years and bad years. We've consistently gone up and up and up and every area neighborhood we go into, you'd be surprised if people are starving for good attend, you know, the customer service yeah, attention, you'd be surprised the, the listing appointments I go on and the agents just, you know, the sellers just say, gosh, you know, it's my agent. I didn't get feedback. I didn't call. Sometimes I had to call him on a Monday after he did an open house over the weekend. It was like, how did open house go? You know, I make it a rule. I do not get in my car until I'm done shutting all the lights off and the client is getting feedback, yeah. a full update. You know, here's what happened. Here's what they're looking, you know, they're looking maybe at a few other properties up the road, but there's feedback, there's communication. And that's such a lack yeah. Such a lack of customer. Again, just going back to that Pelican Hill experience, it's, it's and, huge. and it is. And so many times, you know, I've had even even other agents with, you know, that, you know, I follow up with. They may have had a question or two, which then parlayed into a deal. Yeah. And if there wasn't that, you know, follow up, or and I'm always shocked. You know, all the doors that um, that you know I, I open up for buyers, I never get a call back. 99.99% .99 of the time, I never get a call back from that agent that was showing it. Hey, what did your client think? Are they interested? Yeah. Do you have any feedback for me to get back to my sellers? Yeah. You know, so I can't imagine what they're telling their sellers, if anything. Yeah. But again, that goes back to when I go on the listing appointments. Yeah, I didn't hear anything from my agent. I had to track him down. These are big agents. Yeah. And getting back to the phone call thing that you had mentioned, you called three people. You, or maybe you called a lot of people yeah. and you only got three calls back. Yeah. And yeah. that, you know, and, and so that's where just that was you know. the, that that was the biggest thing is you know 
again, you guys are huge. I, I called and I got a switchboard. I got an operator. This is a now business. And if yeah. you someone calls in to see the house, like we're sitting in now, and someone doesn't get back to them, whether it's a sign call or a, a, a call from, from the marketing material, yeah. and if they're not getting a call within you know a minute or two, they're on to the next. Yeah. And so that can really, it's, it's, you it's know, huge. it's, it's yeah. a lot different. Um, yeah. And, and it's not just getting the call back. It's intelligently being able to talk about the house, get people excited about the house, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's where I, I don't, and I hate to think of, I'm not a salesman. I, I educate people. I talk to people and, you know, I, I, I hate, hate, you know, BS or this or that, or, you know, it, it's, it, it always has helped when things come across more genuine, yeah, like you said. Absolutely. So, is I hear a lot because you're giving out so much good information for people yeah. starting out. Like I said, have you mentored? Have you done any of that stuff? Have you helped out? Obviously, you help out the agents in your office. You know, are yeah. you open to doing that? What, what does that kind of look like? Because I feel like there's a, a servant kind of mentality that you have. Yes, that. yes. I mean, you know, obviously, I'm I'm still, you know plugging away eight days a week doing your own thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um but absolutely i'm always here my doors open and i i'm i have had several clients over the last you know probably the last five six years i've had good clients of mine say hey my son would really or my daughter would love to come in and just shadow you Stop sit with you, you yeah. for a summer internship yeah and so i've had them come in and yeah it's you know and and they they want to learn the business and um and see what it's all about. Yeah. So when people come and kind of ride along with me for the day, it's it's nonstop. Yeah. They, and, they in fact, don't. by lunchtime, they're like, I'm exhausted. Yeah, like, but but that's my plan. And that, that's my goal is to exhaust people by lunch and show, you know, what from the is. phone calls and the passion and how things are worded and articulated. And, and it, it's all so important. It really, really is. Yeah. Because... Like I said, the distorted perception here is, hey, I've got a little bit of credit card debt. Let me get a license and uh, and, and yeah. go pay some debt off. No, yeah. it's <laughs> it's not that. And and you know what? I would tell you if you're planning on just doing this as a part time thing, you know, it's it's, not gonna work it, like that. it's it's just not. Of course, everyone will pop something here and there, but um, it's you, not sustainable. you have to run this as a business. Yeah. And um, you know, yeah, fifteen years and. You know, the, the business model has really started to come full circle where you're getting those calls. I'm selling homes that I've sold now two and three times yeah. in the repeat business, the clients. I have two homes for sale right now that I didn't, I had the listing on the home, but I didn't represent them as a buyer. And so they called me, they remembered that level of service. Yeah. And so they picked up the phone and said, hey, you didn't sell me the house. I had another agent, but you did such a great job that I can't think of anyone better That's than huge. you to come back and resell this house for me. And so those are big compliments, yeah. you know, yeah, those, those are really, really massive. big compliments. That's, and, uh, that's you know, crazy that that's happening. Yeah. Um, so let everyone know where they can get in contact with you. If they have any questions, if they have any, uh, concerns or anyone wants to reach out and ask you a question. Yeah, absolutely. So I can, uh, you can find me on, you, you can go to stanfieldrealestate.com. Um, I'm available, you know, through email. If you want to go to Garrett at stanfieldrealestate.com, um, I, my door is open. And if anybody ever wants to get in touch with me, um, I do have some people reach out from time to time on social media. Hey, could you give me some advice? Could you take some time? I've had people come into the office, sit down, spend, you know, 20, 30 minutes with them and really see if this is something that they want to explore. Um, it is a business and, um, it's exciting and obviously can be rewarding, but time, energy, effort, and a lot of sacrifice goes into it. So, thank you guys yeah. so much from the uh, the Easter Twins here. Yeah. Uh, we, I'm so glad you guys could listen to this. I hope you guys got a lot from it. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.